things are moving at light speed. So we now have the pros giving their thoughts on the common BRICS currency and what they believe is going to happen. Of course, we haven't even gotten to the point yet where everything needs to be um, to be connected and uh, has to have interoperability. But this is what this is from CCN.com. This is what Alessia Amagini, co-head of the Asia Center Department for the Institute uh, for International Political Studies has to say. Now, this individual believes that the currency it says she noted that as a result, central banks purchased a record 1,136 tons of gold last year to reduce their reliance on the U.S. dollar. This individual believes that the, the currency will be backed by gold. If that does happen, gold will skyrocket more. Gold already has, has been looking beautiful the last year and a half or so. Um, silver also. But if they go heavy, if they continue to go heavy with gold, because let's be clear, gold is being used to protect themselves. There's a lot going on with the system right now. A lot of powerful entities as well as regular people protecting their value with gold. That's number one. Number two, sure, they could use gold to back this common currency because it's universal. They need something universal to back this common currency. Um, so it says here. Gold reserves will likely back BRICS new currency as a member nation's stock up. It's very interesting also how everyone is tokenizing. Now, there's like, like this mass tokenization of gold going on. Don't get me wrong. There's always been tokenized gold, but in minute amounts. Now there's this mass push for the token, tokenization of gold. So now we have another expert here. This expert is, is named Melissa Pistolini or Pistilli, an analyst with Investing News Network, noted that, quote, that the new currency may struggle to balance the influence of the Chinese yuan with the incorporation of smaller currencies like the Russian ruble. That's an interesting take that I had not thought of before. It says, despite these obstacles, Pistilli sees potential benefits, including more efficient cross-border transactions. Now, right there. They're going to be heavily limited, but but wait, she's going to tell you that they're going to be heavily siloed just among member nations. That's it. it says cross border transactions, increased financial inclusion and deeper economic ties among member states. That means outside of BRICS, that's not going to work. You think SWIFT is going to allow that in their regions? No. Or any of these big uh, Western powers? No. So they're going to be cut off, but they'll have a lot of flow possibly within certain member states. Each part of this, it's not like it's one system. This is a conglomeration of systems. This is why they've been looking at other uh, um, interoperability providers like Ripple, XRP, XRPL. Um, they're looking at, the, the you know, who else is in that region? Stellar's in that region. I'm trying to think who else are in those regions. Um, Hedera is over there. They've been working heavily with all of those companies. You, uh, Maina region is heavy with Ripple and XRP, Hedera, Zenfin is there also. Um, then in, in Southeast Asia, you have Ripple heavily there, Stellar heavily there. Um, these are facts. You can look this up. So why are they working with them all? And their central banks are deep with the bank coins, very deep. Because when it comes time to tie, not just this common BRICS currency, but when it comes time to tie together all those local digital currencies, at number one, that's, notice how they went with the local digital currencies first. That's going to be priority because just how do I put this? Each individual country wants to retain their power, even if it's a little bit of power. They want to contain their power, maintain their power. Um, they want to increase on their power. Uh, and so with a customized system, you get that. So they're sort of meeting in the middle by having local digital currencies with a super customized system. Then you have this conglomeration that they're rolling out called the common BRICS currency, um, which is going to lack interoperability, of course. So that's going to need interoperability. So like, where does that come from? Why were they talking about Ripple? Why were they talking about XRP? Is there a reason for that? Um, then you look at the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, where, you know, uh, very close ties with Ripple and their CBDC platform. How does that work out when Ripple is in the clear and ready to connect everything together? Um, now, once again, I want to say, I believe that because of a lot of the crossover between the West and the East, the West needs the East, the East needs the West. We can't get, get beyond that. Th that's not going to happen. Um, they need each other to survive. I believe in the background, they know this, that they're going to need um, the private sector to step in. They're going to need Ripple to step in. They're going to need Quant to step in, um, Hedera, etc., to tie everything together.
They do. And they all serve different purposes. Chain link. We'll get to chain link a little bit later. There's major stuff happening today, by the way. Um, I think they know that. This is why Christopher Waller, who is of the Fed, can speak to India, who is a part of major part of BRICS Nation, and say, hey, you know what? Well, we take a look at you. we took a look at your system. You know, this is our thoughts on it. We believe you should wait on the private sector. The private sector is definitely 100 percent, I believe, going to come from the U.S., and I think that's going to be led by Ripple. I do. I think it's going to be led by Ripple. It'll be followed behind by a few other utility bank coin companies. They're going to flood right in. Um, just my humble opinion. Uh, so, you know, this all plays right into the new financial system. So we need to continue to observe this and they're going to continue to put out more and more information. Let's see if they have any other um, so-called experts here that, that speak on this. As part of his efforts to revolutionize global finance, BRICS recently launched a new global payment system. Yes, but remember, it's in its infancy. We must observe, just like we did with Fed now. No one starts off running. You start off crawling, then you walk a little bit, then you can run, right? First, you jog a little bit, then you can run, right? That's how everything works. All right, so now let's move on from here. This We can go deeper, but let's move on. We'll have a lot more news. And then I want to get to the, uh, the next members only video here. So now this article here is titled, Ripple CEO comments on Elon Musk mentioning XRP. You know, from what I read in articles, I didn't watch the video. If, if there was a video, I didn't watch it. I read the articles the other day. It, from what I read, if they're they're accurate, it seemed like he was pretty neutral. Like I, I didn't see anything major. But let, let's read this and find out what's going on, just in case there's good information here. The video has gone viral. Within the XRP community, prompting a reaction from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse in his remark, Garlinghouse reiterated that the United States of voters. Oh, see how he's putting that pressure on the the, the the politicians. And I said that. Now, listen, I don't follow politics very closely. I, like, I have too much other stuff to do. And that's filled with a lot of nonsense. Just my humble opinion. Just my humble opinion. But I have gleamed a little bit. And it seems like all of a sudden everybody loves crypto. All of a sudden, everybody is, you know, oh, we're going to do good for crypto. I don't know the specifics, but now they're all allegedly positive. So this is a wise uh, reaction, a wise strategic move. Add that pressure. I wish he would have said a little bit more, but let's continue on. Let's see what he says. Uh, maybe he does. He says, uh, in his remark, Garley House reiterated that the United States voters care about crypto, particularly XRP. According to him, see how he's highlighting that? He knows. Listen, XRP is heavy. There's a lot of people that are into XRP. They don't talk about it. They don't, com they're not in the comment section. They don't make videos about it, but they're heavy into XRP. They just read articles. That's all they do. Um, so there is a big silent majority out there. All right. And some people are interested. And I know because they've told me this um, and they don't hold any XRP right now, but they're very, very interested. Hey, listen, I don't make, I, I mean, listen, I don't make the rules. <laughs> I'm just telling you what people tell me. Um, so my thoughts are, if that is the case, if that's true, because you can't believe everything people tell you, if that's true, then they're probably waiting for the right time to jump in. They feel like it's a right time to jump in, you know, um, that's what I'm thinking. But that adds to this, this, this silent, I won't say silent majority, my apologies. Maybe that's the wrong verbiage, but this silent mass of people who are, or who are just waiting, right? So yeah, there, so a lot of voters, I would think, are very interested in XRP. According to him, voters are interested in favorable policies. They should be that promote innovation and job creation. He has to throw that in. That's just, you know, par for course. And job creation in the country. The Ripple CEO contended that political candidates who ignore the importance of crypto and blockchain risk losing support from an informed and growing voter base. Are there any ignoring crypto right now? I don't know. I don't know what's I don't know, folks. Um, but yes, he is. He's 100 percent correct. And they should use I know that they should use it, this to their advantage. And I know they have a lot of uh, lobbying money out there. I don't know who they're lobbying, but there's a lot of lobbying money out there coming from Ripple and other crypto firms um, to to, you know, to hopefully lean the politicians more fairly. Really, they've been leaning so far away from crypto. Um, the, the most you can hope is that they treat us a little bit fairly. Like, you know, if they treat us fairly, we will explode. We will run. We're going to do that anyway. Once we get past this case, I'm telling you, um, we're going to run XRP is already in the clear, but don't get it twisted. We still need, I know I'm using some old verbiage. Don't get it twisted. We still need the companies to do what they need to do across the board. All right. We don't need them holding back. 
So now we're going to get into a little bit of chain link. Chain link has been on fire lately. Super bullish. I don't, I don't know how anybody's not super bullish on chain link and doesn't think chain link, not financial advice, but doesn't think chain link is going to explode in the future. How? Between, I mean, them, Solana, Ripple, Ripple has slowed down a little bit, but they still have a lot of good activity, um, a lot of good developments. But Chainlink has been very active. This article here is titled Chainlink Using AI Oracles, AI Oracles to Bring Market Moving Corporate Data on Chain. The Oracle Protocol is partnering with financial infrastructure providers, including Franklin Templeton and UBS. That's another thing I like about Chainlink. They, they said they were going to go after the big money. I'm paraphrasing, of course. They said they were going to go after the big money and they've been doing it. They kept their word. And that matters to someone like me. That matters. I like a company that operates with certainty. They say this is where we're going and they go there. They say this is what we're doing. And they do it. That's how you get to the money. You need to know who's behind the uh, thing that you're investing in. Why is it going to go up? Who's going to be using it? Why is there going to be a high val uh, value or volume? And this is part of it. It says Chainlink has piloted an on-chain on database of corporate actions using artificial intelligence and decentralized Oracle technology, according to an October 21st announcement. I'd like to know what type of AI they're using. And, and I know it's been thoroughly tested, but I just asked that question. There's been a, a few glitches in AI over the past year. You know, for those of us who still research AI deeply, I still do. I just haven't uploaded it to the channel, but I still... You know, I still do my research. The pilot seeks to harness, quote, the combined advancements in AI, oracles and blockchain technology to address the lack of real time and standardized data around corporate actions, unquote, Chainlink said, quote, we found that by using data oracles paired with multiple large language AI models, we were able to source unverifiable, unstructured and often unreachable off chain data and convert it, convert it autonomously into digital data that is available in near real time unquote chain link said whoa hey listen chain link is a force to be reckoned with super bullish force to be reckoned with and i'm gonna tell you what listen flair i like you i hold some flair flair you better hurry up i'm i'm telling you right now i know do the testing make sure everything is good i'm telling you but as far as interoperability and, and linking everything together, connect everything, like you say, Chainlink is out ahead. They're doing a great job, um, in my humble opinion. I know Flair does different things, and they have specialties, sure, um, but you want to you you kick it into high gear. Information on corporate actions, such as mergers, dividends, and stock splits, quote, presents one of the most complex unstructured data problems in the financial world, unquote. Chainlink said in a report detailing the initiative, and that's going to be delicious. You know how that sounds to business people? That sounds like, I don't know how to phrase, I don't know what to put there, but it sounds great. It sounds amazing. It sounds delicious, right? So now we have more Chainlink news. That's not it. This is what I'm talking about. They're on fire right now. Let's go here. So then we have this article, and it's titled ANZ to Kickstart. Chain link private transactions protocol and RWA real world asset boost. Go chain link, go. I'm wait, I'm ready. The private transactions allow institutional users to define privacy conditions in a way that keeps on chain data private from all third parties and adversaries. Chainlink has introduced a new protocol aimed at ensuring privacy for financial institutions, enabling them to conduct secure confidential transactions across different blockchain networks. Australia and New Zealand, now keep in mind, Ripple at one time was heavy in Australia. Now, I haven't heard an update in a while, but Ripple was working with a few banks in Australia. All right, but well, maybe we need an update soon. I don't know if they're going to release one. We may have to dig into that. But Australia and New Zealand banking group ANZ will pilot this private feature for settling tokenized real world assets as part of Singapore's uh, Project Guardian, highlighting a practical application of Chainlink's technology in the banking sector. And they, they kept their word big time. They said they were going to go after the banking sector. They definitely did. Now, who I'm waiting on to keep their word, and I'm expecting them to, Solana said they were going to go after the banks. 
Hey, Solana, what's, what's going on with that? <laughs> Get on the job. Listen, the bull run is like, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it seems like it's around the corner. What I want, what I would prefer is have all of these partnerships lined up. Now, you can announce them once the, the true bull run bull run hits, or you can release these this information little by little, and it'll build up the bullishness uh, of your chain. Either way, I'm okay with it, but we I want to make sure you're doing something because I haven't heard an update on that. Get after those banks now. I want that bank money. Oh, I'm just I'm just saying. Chainlink released its CCIP private transactions protocol, a privacy preserving tool on Tuesday. The tool will allow financial institutions to maintain confidentiality and regulatory uh, compliance when transacting across blockchain networks. Australia and New Zealand Banking Group, ANZ, will be among the first financial institutions to pilot the capability for cross-chain settlement of tokenized real-world assets under the Monetary Authority of Singapore MAS Project Guardian Initiative. Interesting. So now I'm going to look a little deeper into that and get a little update on that. Because I want to know a little bit more. Cross-chain protocols, um, which Ripple also has deep relationship with the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Look at all the crossover. You're watching the new financial system come together right before your eyes. Cross-chain protocols allow token holders to transfer and interact with ap applications among different blockchains, which is otherwise not possible. RWAs refer to tokenized version of a physical asset that we know, so we're going to skip that little part there. Let's move on here. We have just a little bit. I think we have two articles on, on Bitcoin today, actually. So now, <clears throat> this article here, pardon me, this article here is titled Black Rocks I Bit Investors Throw $329 Million into ETFs as Bitcoin dips 3%. It says Black Rocks Bitcoin Fund carried over to the rest of, uh, of the United States spot Bitcoin ETFs, which recorded a net inflow of $294 million on October 21st. Investors in Black Rocks iShare uh, Bitcoin Trust bought the dip and i know i've been saying that they see they understand there's a massive bull run coming remember that's not uh, uh that that came from pros people who it's their job they get paid real money not they're not youtubers they get paid real money to monitor what's coming and they were saying um that they're expecting a massive bull run to come for bitcoin right when bitcoin goes off the rest of crypto is going to follow um, so a lot of these people remember that they remember that. And I say that because a lot of people have very short memories, but they remember that. And they're when the dip goes down, they're getting a little bit more each time it dips. They buy some. They dip. It dips. They buy some. Now, that's important. My humble opinion, it, it shows that they remain bullish and they believe they're expecting a massive bull run. Because let's be real. Once again, they didn't get into Bitcoin and crypto to make to make pennies. They got into Bitcoin and crypto to make lots and lots of money, right? And, and I believe that's going to come. Who knows? Some people are saying in 2025, we shall see. But when it goes, it will go hard, in my humble opinion, not financial advice. It was the third time in four trading days that BlackRock's, listen to that, third time in four trading days that BlackRock Bitcoin uh, ETF Fund received over $300 million in inflows. Fairside investors show if that's not bullish, if that doesn't show a bullish energy bubbling under the surface, I don't know what does. So now, wait, let's get to this article here. We have another um, one more Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin related article. So now. This article is titled Satoshi Era Whale Wakes Up with Stunning 411,696% Profit. I told you. This, now, this is something I've been watching closely. At least I've been attempting to. Um, a lot of these older wallets have been waking up and they've been selling. As they're selling, the big companies are buying. The only reason that will happen is the big companies see an opportunity to grab power because remember it's not just about making money with bitcoin but you can control bitcoin once they can once they uh the big companies have the majority of bitcoin if it ever comes to that point they can use their media they have an advantage that no one else has they can use their mainstream media to dump the price pump the price they can do anything that they want this is a power grab that's how i look at it 
It's a power grab. It's not just about value, but value is is a key element, of course. An anonymous Bitcoin whale from Satoshi era has awoken after 13.4 years of dormancy and made its first transaction, according to a report by Whale Alert. The wallet with the address one uh, FOI C O W Y quote unquote has been inactive since June 17th, 2011, when it received a 20 Bitcoin portion of 1033.96 Bitcoin transfer between two anonymous wallets. Listen, I anticipate a lot more selling. There's going to be a lot of selling um, coming up, in my humble opinion. And I, I, I think a lot of that value is going to come out of Bitcoin or has been coming out of Bitcoin. I think it's going to go into money market funds or also some of it's going to go into gold for a little while. I don't think it's going to I don't think the money that's been coming out the last few months from Bitcoin that has gone into gold is trickling into gold. I don't think it's going to stay in gold. I don't. I've seen this happen before. It'll remain there for a little while. Gold will, may go up a little bit more. It's been going up, and then it will come out of there. They will sell. It will come out of there. Gold's price may come down a little bit before it goes back up again. All right, because it has a lot of catalysts to push that price up again, to be quite honest. Just my humble opinion. It says, for 13.4 years, this Bitcoin stash was stored there until yesterday, October 20 of 2024, when it was suddenly activated with a transfer to another anonymous wallet. So now we're going to end off here with a little bit of gold news. This article is titled BRICS Summit Sparks Fresh Gold Rally Amid De-Dollarization Talks. That and you just had those experts come out and say that they firmly believe I'm paraphrasing. They firmly believe that um, the currency is going to be backed by gold. But, you know, I will wait. I think that does get people pumped up, but I will wait until they actually say that. Like, show me that you're going to back it by gold. I don't want to just hear it from third parties. No, you show me it's going to be backed by gold. But then some people may feel if they wait that it may be too late and they may miss out. You know, so it, um, it says here, key points. BRICS nations holds over 20% of global gold reserves, fueling speculation of a gold-backed currency to rival the U.S. dollar. Rival the U.S. dollar? In, in what way? You mean... Nah, let's keep going. Russia and China. The, the, the U.S. dollar is, is definitely ailing right now. It's hurting right now, but mostly because of the U.S. and the U.S.'s actions. I just want to make that clear. That's my opinion. Russia and China account for 74% of BRICS gold reserves, making gold a potential hedge against dollar dominance. As BRICS expands, discussions on reducing dollar reliance have centered on gold as a secure inflation-proof asset. Central banks from BRICS nations are accelerating gold accumulation, boosting gold prices amid a potential de-dollarization shift. A new BRICS currency possibly, possibly, once again, they're saying it, they're not saying it with certainty possibly backed by gold could challenge u.s dollar hegemony in global trade and financial markets the current BRICS summit has stirred considerable discussions on global economic shifts particular particularly regarding potential alternatives to the u.s dollar as the global reserve currency while previous efforts to reduce reliance on the dollar have been met with skepticism the ongoing dialogue among BRICS nations may signal a growing focus on gold as a pivotal asset for these economies. So you have this going for gold, one. You have massive geopolitical tensions going for gold, two. And we have a massive amount of banks around the globe. We just saw a bank go down last week. That was major. Did you see the articles that came out today talking about how the big money was hurting and uninsured deposits, etc., that were connected with that particular bank? That was major. That was a good that was a good sign for those of us who understand when those banks go down, gold is going to skyrocket. Um, so but so you have a massive amount of banks that could do the same thing and go down around the world. That's three major catalysts right there that could send gold. Silver would go up as well. Let's be clear on that. But could send gold skyrack skyrocketing way past the moon. The moon is nothing for gold right now, but we will see. We will see that has to be actuated. That has to come to fruition, of course. Right. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with this. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.